Hey guys, welcome to the Rat Grind channel. Good morning. I hope you're up bright and early today. I have a photo shoot like I told you guys on yesterday's video and I'm getting started a little bit early so that I can provide a video for you guys today. Um, I'm going to get home really late tonight, so I'm going to see if I can still get an update video, um, but as I wanted to get one on the way this morning. Um, last night's video, I had to split it into two. Um, there was some trouble with, uh, with the recording of it. When I was discussing Ethereum, for some reason, it... Um, it cut off so i just we recorded that part and all the way to the end so just yesterday's video just so that you know it's two parts so if you watch the first part um you may have thought that was the end but there was a second part i kept the same thumbnail um and i marked it part one of two and part two of two just so that you guys know and it's easier for you guys to to know so if you if this is your first time in this channel please do subscribe hit the notification bell smash the likes and comment below give me some of your feedback as I'm new to this and I want to be able to provide as much value to you guys as possible. So today, let's get let's get right to it, guys. I'm not going to give you guys an update on my Robinhood this morning because the the it's it's six it's 515 in the morning and the market has, are not open yet. But just to give you a, a small update, um, JDST actually went down uh, another half a percent um, in the pre-market trading. So I think because of that. It's not going to drop down more. It's usually going to pump back up and I will be able to tell my position. Um, hopefully, OK, I'm, this is not going to I'm not saying that this is for sure going to happen. But from what I've seen is when things sort of sell off during the during after hours and pre-market usually pops back up, um, you know, when it opens or drops down and then pops back up. So um, let's see if um if it does that, it's hitting some. It hit, it's hitting some oversold levels. So I think there's a good chance that that um, junior uh, daily gold miners ETF bear mar bear ETF will pop back up. So I just wanted to record a quick video because as you can see, I'm looking at the Ethereum chart. We checked this out last night, and I said that it was testing it. Right? It was testing it, but it hadn't hit it. But last night, it hit that resistance. And then it consolidated and it's pumping back up this morning. I got into a position on on um, Ethereum BTC trading pair t today um, this morning because I saw that happening. I saw it consolidating a little bit and then it start popping back up. Let me just show you in Binance. Um, as you can see on Binance, this is the let's look at the one minute chart, right? The one minute chart started to pump already, guys, right? Um, I got into this trade. I bought it at... Um, Seven, seventy, seventy-eight thousand four hundred fifty-nine satoshis. Right now, it's trading at seventy-nine thousand um, seven hundred ninety-two satoshis. So it's hit that resistance um, up on the top. As you can see, I'm looking at the one-minute chart, and it's, it's sort of having a little bit of a resistance right here in the seven hundred ninety-eight uh, level. And it's dropping down so i think it's just hitting that resistance it's going to consolidate a little bit more it's going to pop back up but it's but it's really getting some big support on the 15 day ema line let's look at the five minute chart yeah the five minute chart as you can see right here it touched the um it touched the 15 day ema line and it didn't it didn't uh, drop back down so that's a really good sign guys um <coughs> 15 minute chart it's pumped 30 minutes, one hour. So as you as you go farther along, the chart looks better and better, guys. It's like the 30 minutes, it's it's not quite touching it anymore. So it's, it's broken through, let's say, the four hour. Yeah. Let's look at the one-day chart. Okay. The one-day chart is, as you can see, it's all green. It's going up. So this is these are the type of positions that I like to enter in when I'm, when I'm trading crypto. And the volume is up today. The volume is 14,532 BTC. So that's really, really good sign. Although the RSI levels are a little bit going to the um, overbought side. So we'll have to watch that. You know, that's it's uh, we need we need a little bit more um, a little bit more um, up so that it can, you know, it can it can stay in the oversold levels for I mean, overbought levels for, you know, for. <clears throat> for a good period of time as you can see on this side see it popped back up it went down just a little bit and it, it continued it stayed there before it dropped down so i mean it's not unheard of that it stays in the overbought level so just watch out for that it hasn't it's not really it hasn't hit these overbought levels at 80 
Um, it's currently at about 76. Yeah, 76, 77. But it, it, it's, I, I believe it still has a chance to pop back up. I'm um, 744 um dollars to an ethereum right now when i start when i traded its pair this morning when i when i got into the position it was 724 so it, it went up 20 dollars already so that's a really really good sign so um like i always say on this channel this is not financial advice i'm not a financial advisor i'm not an accredited investor and anything like that so please take this with a grain of salt do your own research and don't um, get into trades just because i say so or because other people say so make sure that you find value learn this space learn this this skill so that you can be able to see the patterns like i have i'm pretty new to this i've, I've only been doing this for a couple of months um i've learned from a lot of youtubers reading a lot of books um you know just getting myself acquainted with the with the industry with the topics with with the coins and stuff like that ethereum has been really really um really whooped in the last couple months from its highs of almost 1500 it dropped to there was a point when it was down to less than 300 bucks so for it to be able to gain a, over 100 percent of the losses that it took that's a really good sign because it's about it's about halfway day to, to halfway there to the all-time highs i know there was earlier this week there was some some uncertainty because the sec was saying that um it sold securities when it when it ico'd a couple years ago but I think that's sort of waning down and people are getting back momentum and getting back confidence in Ethereum. So just watch that out, guys. Um, that it already, oh, wow. Just while we're talking, it broke up. So the next level that I think this is, this could definitely pump is to up to 800. Um, let's, let me go out of the chart a little bit. Let's look at the one hour chart. Yeah, so there's, it's hitting some resistance level right here. But as soon as it passes this, um, 745 746 as long as it doesn't drop down or if, even if it drops it hits this line right here and then continues its upward momentum then we could all see all the way to 850 because there's no more resistance after it passes this line up until this about you know 850 860 level so that's gonna be something to watch for today guys so get in on that um study that chart a little bit and see what you can do about it so I wanted to share some articles with you guys. Um, I'm a I'm a subscriber to Hacker Noon. It's a medium sub channel that you can be able to read about artificial intelligence, blockchain, crypto, Bitcoin, or any or, or any technology related stuff. Um, there's this author. And his name is Daniel Jeffries. Um, he is amazing. His articles are just so mind blowing that the quality of the content they're almost like reading books, right? There, his his articles are a little bit longer than others, but there's a lot of articles on a day-to-day -day basis that you could be able to read here to see really the technology and the mindset of a lot of people within this space, right? Um, this one is a, a little bit of an older article. It's July 31st last year, so it's almost a year old, but the, the message rings true, you know, still today. Um, he said that why everyone missed the most mind-blowing feature of cryptocurrency. Um, and you should check out this article again, Daniel Jeffries, why everyone missed the most mind-blowing features of cryptocurrency. I mean, he talks about the background of money, the ascent of money from how it started back in the day, um, that it was a, it's a pyramid that it started basically the kings, the, the pharaohs and stuff like that, owning the, the most wealth on top, basically controlling the money, built, making the money. And then it being distributed down but you know he's saying that with cryptocurrency it's upside it's the other side you know that the power comes from the people and you know it it, it goes back up so basically for a long time it's usually the institutions the markets the big corporations the big the big financial people investors are the first into a new opportunity you know like the like the tech, you know, the Microsoft, the, the hardware tech, and then the dot-com days. Usually it's the investors first, and then the people find out later. But this one is opposite because the people find out first, and then, um, um, you know, the the institutional investors, the institutions, the governments, and stuff like that, they're sort of getting in on it on the late, latter end, right? So, you know, it, he's saying here, you know, the kings and nation states know the real golden rule, right? 
control the money and you can control the world. So it's a very, very interesting article because it basically um, gives the power back to the people. So he, he highlighted it here. I'm just going through the article real quick, and I, I highly encourage you to read this on your own. The true power of cryptocurrencies is the power to print and distribute money without a central power, right? Because like I told you guys, um, I keep sharing with you, central banks, essentially, they can print as much money as they want. And that's the problem with fiat currency, because you can have an unlimited supply. And when the supply is up, the value drops, right? I think that's basic supply and demand concept of economics there. With Bitcoin, for example, like I told you guys, $21 million is the max that it can ever be. So just like gold, it has a finite supply. You know, a lot of people say, well, cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin is a scam because there's no intrinsic value. Um, I'm sorry, my alarm. Usually we get back from the gym at that time. I got up extra early this morning. Um, so like I was saying, you know, normally a lot of people are saying that Bitcoin is has no intrinsic value because it's not backed by anything. And I told you guys the dollar, the US dollar and a lot of fiat cryptocurrencies are not backed by anything. A lot of the currencies of the world, it's actually backed by the dollar. There was the, um, uh, in 1945, I think it's called the Brentwood, Brentwood system. Uh, I mean, I, I you know, it, it slipped my mind, but it's Brentwood, I think. Um, where the U.S. dollar was backed by gold because basically the whole world deposited their dollars into the United States. And so they had that meeting in, I think, Ohio or Connecticut, somewhere somewhere in the, in the U.S., the United Nations, and they agreed that, you know what, because dollar is backed by gold, let's go back our, our currencies with dollar because it's as good as gold. Before, you could take, take your dollar bills to a bank and redeem it for gold that is in the vault. That was the day. But Nixon, for some, I mean, I'm not that old, so I don't know exactly the context of why they they had to do it. I have to read up a little bit more about that. But they cut that off. They cut that tether off. So basically, you know what? We're not going to back our, our, we're not going to allow people to withdraw money from gold. And it was called, I think it was called the Nixon shock, right? So that was that was crazy. So when people say that Bitcoin is not backed by anything, our fiat currencies that you all think that, oh, well, it's backed by the government power. No, it's not. There's more deficit. If you look at the, the, the debt, debt clock in New York, it grows every single day and it will never. I say that. I mean, that's that's pretty a big, very big, bold statement that it will never go down. Because we need to keep spending debt in order for our for our currencies to have value. Because the first ever currency in existence was borrowed. It, it, it it's not by, backed by anything, so it had to have been borrowed. So with that said, you know, the debt has to keep going up. So just keep that in mind, guys. That cryptocurrencies have the power to print and distribute money without a central power. Um, he's saying that not even Satoshi Nakamoto, a lot of the the um the crypto punks that were thinking about cryptocurrencies back in the day really realized that i mean they already knew that there would be cryptocurrencies because um this is interesting guys um you when you're surfing the web i know this because i'm, I'm from the web industry but um a lot of you guys are very familiar with the 404 error right let me show you guys so like like this error like this not found. URL not found. 404 error. When they invented the web. Right? Okay. A lot of you may not know this. There is error 402 payment. Basically, error 402 is payment required. So they already thought about like internet transacting money because information, the internet changed the way information is delivered. Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies are changing the way transactions are made. So that is the big difference. But they really thought about this, guys, when they invented the Internet. And not a lot of us know this, but it's there. You know, error 404. Um, let's see if there's a definition on error 404. Oh, sorry, error 402. See, Error the 402 error is the numerical value of the error error occurred. The error number is one of the value to identify the error. 
So it's it's really um, it's about transacting value over the internet. So that already existed. So read up on this article. It's very very interesting, guys. He again, Daniel Jeffries. Just Google him. He's my connection on LinkedIn. Um, so if you want to follow me on LinkedIn, Chris J. Cardona, um, and you can find him there and maybe connect with him, talk to him a little bit. He's a really, really smart guy. I love I love his writing. I love I love him. Um, you know, there's just so much value in the, all the articles that he delivers, right? Um, just want to show you some of the stuff that he... Oh, he just did a, a review of EOS, which I'm, I'm bullish on that project. The greatest trading books ever written. Yeah, so he has a lot of uh, five keys to crypto evolution. This was a, another very interesting article. So just read up on him. He has quite a lot of our, different articles here. So another thing that I wanted to share with you guys was this. This was on my, on my thumbnail. <clears throat> Why cryptos are a growing threat to Facebook, Apple, Microsoft, Google, and Amazon. I'm sorry about that, guys. I have a, I still have a cough. So the largest U.S. companies are all tech companies, right? It wasn't, be, it wasn't always the case. Um, like if you look at this chart, same day eleven years ago, Exxon Mobil, GE, Microsoft, BP, which is British Petroleum, and Citigroup, the bank, they were the five um, largest U.S. companies. Today, Apple, Google, Microsoft, Amazon, and Facebook. Right. But if you really look at the growth of um, cryptocurrencies, it's really becoming evident that there, these companies, most of them, the products are still in beta or some of them are not even out and about. And people already find value in them, are investing in them. Imagine once the companies actually succeed and, you know, all those scammy coins projects get weeded out. And the strongest ones remain. You can imagine. We're talking about trillions of dollars um, worth in one in one um, in one coin. So they're really knocking on the doorsteps of of these five big guns of our U.S. companies, right? So I mean, I'm not saying that's going to happen, but this article brings up a good point. It's on Medium. Just Google it. Why crypto's a growing threat. To FAMGA, Facebook, Apple, Microsoft, Google, and Amazon. It's a really, really interesting <coughs> article. I mean, there's blockchain, cryptocurrencies, decentralization, smart contracts, the decentralized community. These are all the the power behind cryptocurrency. So it's a really, really great thing. Under the news that I saw this last night before I went to bed, actually, was the New York Times was saying that Goldman Sachs to open Bitcoin trading operation. They're going to open a trading desk for Bitcoin. Goldman Sachs, again, it's another. I thought I was talking about Morgan Stanley last night, and Goldman Sachs is another powerhouse. Although, you know, they were they're very irresponsible. They were they were part of the 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 real estate bust a couple of years a couple of years ago, almost a decade ago. So um, I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing because you know they're they're. It's a centralized organization, but nonetheless, it's a great thing that they're, they're, they believe in cryptocurrencies. They're, they're starting to believe in this particular market. So it's a really, really good sign for all of us. And then this morning, um, when I was reading the news, Goldman Sachs says Bitcoin is not a fraud and, you know, because they plan trading it. So there's a lot of value to cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin because of the fact that it provides these decentral decentralization um, capabilities and the ability to be able to print and distribute money all over the world in instantly and at relatively cheap, right? Um, the only problem is again scalability and performance. And I had an I had a I had a, a YouTube I mean a, a video I was talking about Ethereum is adding sharding, right? And another video I was talking about that Bitcoin has the Lightning Network, where basically it processes transactions separately from the main blockchain and then feeds that into the main blockchain. So once the scalability um, is solved, watch that cryptocurrency will definitely be able to gain market attraction. I wanted to also do a correction. I realized yesterday I said that Visa had 45 transactions. 
I don't know what I was thinking. It's 45,000, not 45, 45,000 so that you can be able to see the scale. 45,000 for Visa, MasterCard networks, 10, 10 to 15 for Bitcoin and Ethereum. You can see the disparity there, right? Because it provides more security. So it, you need to be able to, to limit the amount of transactions that happen. It's meant to not allow transactions to happen because the world, the, the data is distributed all over the world and internet connections vary from place to place. So it needs that delay so that it has time to propagate all over the world. But once the internet supports it, maybe there's a trunk line just for processing these, these transactions, maybe that will change. But currently, those are the limitations that we have. I think the technology still has like a wall, but it's going to break through eventually. Um, the last thing that I want to talk about is why the blockchain values your privacy more than Facebook. You know, to read up on this article, check it out. It's on Cointelegraph. Uh, there's a lot of this Cambridge Analytics. Cambridge Analytics, actually, yesterday I was reading up that they're declaring bankruptcy, that they're going to seize operations. I mean, come on, they were... They're just doing that to protect their, themselves because they know that the United States Senate, the Congress, the government is going to hammer them down. So it's just right. But the thing with blockchain is you, your data, you own your data. Like if you sign into Facebook, for example, you, they create a wallet, like a data wallet, where you personally can choose what data it is from your own profile that you want to share with any network. So once that happens, we're going to get there. There's already a lot of companies that are trying to build on this technology, but sooner or later, it's going to mature and it's going to, everybody's going to be able to, to adapt this technology. You know, like the GPDR, they did, um, they came up with laws, right? So it's all about data portability and the right to say, delete me, delete me. Like, tell me what you got on me. Tell me the file that you have on me and give me the opportunity and right to tell you, no, give that, delete all of that. So that's what the GPDR really wants to allow us consumers and regular people to be able to do. So that is really where the blockchain will shine. And I think this comes at a very critical moment in our history that we have this amazing technology, right? I want to read an excerpt, a quote from here from... Um, the founder of Valid, um, Daniel Geistig, Geistig, Geistiger, Geistiger. And I'm sorry if I, if you ever listen to this, this video, I hope I didn't, I, I, I pronounced your name correctly, Daniel Geistiger. So by matching identity owners and data consumers directly, the cost currently charged by data aggregators such as social networks, search engine providers, and data brokers will be emitted. So we're going to cut out the middleman, right? We don't need them to be able to hold our data. We need their service, not to say that we want them to go away. We want the technology that they provide, but we want to be able to do it with control of our own privacy, with our own data, right? Because like I was saying last night, 12 million people, the Commonwealth Bank of, China, of uh, Australia lost 12 million people's financial histories. Think about that, the gravity, 12 million million people guys so that is um that is just mind-blowing so and the hacks happen it's just it's just crazy so we definitely need to be able to protect our privacy as much as possible all right guys well before i go let me just let's look at oh wow okay so it um it bounced a little bit and then it's, it's that's the one hour chart let's look at the one minute chart i just want to give you guys before before we get we get out of here if what's happening yeah so that's really good guys so it broke through it bounced on that res previous resistance and it's breaking off so that's a really good sign so watch out for this today i'm gonna try to see if i can record a video tonight even just a short one just to give you an update on what happened but it's it's at 744 dollars so that's amazing that's amazing i got into a trade on this early this morning i mean i'm holding a lot of ethereum but I just got in on it. I did the Ethereum BTC trading pair, and I just got in just to be able to make my gains for today. So that's pretty much it, guys. I hope you have a wonderful day today. I'm, I'm going to try to record a video, but if I don't see you, I'll see you on the next video, and I wish you and your family have a success-filled day.